And this is something I would use for cloning, which, to be fair, I don't use uh, anymore. And I'm going to create a new farm again. And this time it's going to be an access database. And the farm name, I'm going to use the uh, use dummy. And this was a recommendation of Thomas Kurtzing when he, he said this is probably the best way to clone Citrix servers. So we've got an access database called dummy. And then we just go through our, it's going to be that CTX full admin group. And it always asks me to check, yes. It's going to be no encryption. And we're going to give it the same server. There's no reason to not share the license server. Right, that wasn't too difficult for it to create an access database. Uh, you can see an error in the background. That's just from the console, the fact that um, it can no longer see the test farm, which was the uh, SQL data store that we created. So let's just run um, discovery again. Remember, we don't need to configure it because it's pointing to the local host. Ah, and there appears our dummy farm and the same administrator group, I assume. Yep. And uh, not surprising, there's just the one server. So you, you, as soon as you get confident with change farm, you feel a bit more like a professional. And I know this seems rather trivial, but this is quite an important thing when you're moving. Uh, You'll be moving farms, at, farms, moving servers around uh, at enterprises when you're doing migrations and upgrades. Sometimes you take them out of the farm for a while, but uh, do certain tests. Maybe use the access database for a little bit for testing. Uh, certainly, uh, I've been in farms that have had 20 Citrix servers and they've had no test servers. And I said, "Which one do you use as a test?" And they said, "Well, we just take one out, make a change, and pop it back in." And uh, they'd have been much better to take at least two out of their 18 um, and leave 18 in the production and this is the way to do it, you just to change farm, make it separate uh, you should be able to configure a discovery on your console so that it can contact uh, both farms for instance uh, let's just do that now and if I add the, uh, the original farm that my other servers have Let's just see uh, see what we get, and yeah, not surprisingly, we get both farms in the console. So it's a little bit more complex, but it's uh, it's still pretty convenient. And uh, anytime you mess up in your test farm, generally speaking, you're not uh, affecting your uh, production farm. Well, doubtful anyway. Anyway, now we have this server at the uh, a dummy. Um, access data is actually perfect for. Uh, let me just remove that from the uh, discovery process. This is perfect now for cloning. Okay, so it's just simply going to be a matter of. Um, I'm trying to think where I've put my sysprep these days. Okay, the sysprep's uh, different depending on your version of uh, the OS. So this is Windows 2003 R2, and obviously this clears all the uh, security information, um, allowing you to clone it. Now, at this stage, uh, it's simply a matter of uh, resealing it, and then it'll shut it down. And then, obviously, when it comes up, it'll be uh, it'll come up with the mini setup. You can see the option has been selected there and when it comes up again I'm just trying to think what um, there's obviously a few other changes you can make but there is one change that you do need to make I wonder if I can remember what it's uh, what it's called it's, it's a config file let me just uh, search for that right it's this one here it's this uh, CTX STA config and you can see at the top there, there is um, a secure ticket authority ID. Now, uh, that needs to be unique um, for every Citrix server that you use on the secure ticket authority. You probably want to use about three servers in your farm to provide um, a secure ticket to any gateway requests. 
Now that 12 digit uh, ooh, number at the back there just simply wants to be different. Uh, you can either do it the professional way, which I think is to get the MAC address of the server and substitute the MAC address in there because I think that's 12 digits as well. Or you can simply just go in there and change it to uh, <laughs> the next one. Okay, and then you can just uh, save that. All right, so you've cloned it, it's come back up. Of course, now it's still in the dummy farm, 